Okay, Clack. Spell Wednesday. Uh, I, I don't know how to spell Wednesday. Well, James, just sound it out. Oh, okay. So, oh, like this? No, James, it's Wednesday. You said sound it out, and that's how you sound it out. <laughs> you think you have it bad. Do is spelt with an X. <laughs> I think it comes to no surprise that I'm terrible burr. What spelling? I feel like everyone in life falls into two categories. Either you're good at math and bad at reading, or you're weird. Weird. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that I'm a math boy. My mom told me that I have dyslexia because she has dyslexia and I have all the symptoms, but we never got that diagnosed by a doctor, so... <laughs> you can't make me take my meds, mom! A lot of times what I do to cover up the fact that I spell lower than a first grade level is I will purposely misspell words to the point where it's obviously a joke. You thought I was doing that to be funny, but it's actually because I have zero self-confidence in my spelling and I don't want anyone to point out my mistakes. I mentioned this in a different video, but in elementary school, I was put into an honors program and everyone had to take spelling tests a grade ahead of their level. And by everyone, I mean everyone except me, because I failed every single spelling test. So I had to take spelling tests that were on level. Ew. Every week when we took a spelling test, I would have to move to the back of the classroom, and the teacher would stand right next to me. She'd call out everyone else's word, which had like eight syllables, like anti disestablementarianism and then she'd turn to me and give me my on-level word. James, your word is cat. <sighs> Also, one year, a class did a spelling burr, burr, burr. me, and everyone had to participate, and, like, I didn't even care that I was the first one out. Hey, that's almost my name. Another thing that I mentioned in a pretty old video is that I used to have a speech impediment when I was little. I couldn't pronounce my Oz, and I talked like this. I I'm good now. <laughs> Obviously. So every other day during school, I had to go to a speech burr, burr, burr. class, and one day, the teacher who taught me how to pronounce my Oz, I'll call her Mrs. Kool-Aid, gave me the sheet of paper with a bunch of raindrops, raindrops on it, and she said, for every raindrop on this page, say the word raindrop. But then she just left the room, and I said, well, I'm not gonna do this. I didn't say Waindrop a single time. Cause like, no one was even there. No one would have seen me not saying Waindrop. So why would I do something that I didn't want to do? But then, the funny part is, when she came back, she asked, Are you finished saying your Raindrops? No. Well, how many did you say? I didn't say any. You stupid child. I told her the truth for some reason. I don't know why, it was probably the easiest lie I'd like to get away with. But that's why I remember this story. I'm still mad at myself for telling the truth. And I had to say Raindrop a bunch of times in- burp -a -burr. In front of her, and she would only go to the next Waindrop until I said it right. And it was terrible. Burp -a -burr. Really hurt my feelings. Since I was struggling with reading and spelling, I had to get an IEP, an incredible, excellent personality, which meant I had to go to a special class for a little bit during school. And the teacher who taught this class was none other than Mrs. Kool-Aid. Oh yeah. I don't know why I said it like that. I don't remember anyone ever telling me I was put into a special needs class. I just remember going into speech therapy every other day, and then those classes slowly morphed into teaching me how to read and spell. I don't know, I thought reading this book would have helped me talk better. Two other kids were in the reading class with me, and I remember the day when reading for me just clicked. Burr, burr, burr. Us three were given a simple sentence to read. It was about bees. It was so simple. It was literally just to defend their hive from wasps. Bees don't sting the wasp. Instead, they all crowd around the wasp and flap their wings to raise their body temperature, heating up the wasp until it dies. And then Mrs. Kool-Aid asked us, okay, how do bees defend against wasps? And the other two kids said, they sting them. And I said, what? No, you moans. Didn't you weed this? <gasps> the words in this paper are being information. Also, I had only by bee. So I was in these classes all the way until the sixth grade. I was getting better at reading. It still wasn't great, but I was getting better at it. And one day, Mrs. Kool-Aid said, you know, James, you should try competing in the Battle of the Books. Battle of the Books? Battle of the Books? Battle of the Books! Finally, reading sounds fun! At my school, Battle of the Books was this competition where students were given a list of four books to read within a time limit of, like, two months. I don't remember how long it was. And after however many months it was, the contestants would sit in an auditorium and take turns answering questions about the books. And whoever got the most questions right would get a pizza party. And that's where the battle part comes in. We'd kill each other for pizza. And then there were two more rounds, each with four more books, so there was a total of 12 books you had to read. And we were allowed to be with a partner, so my partner was TJ. Hey, TJ, you remember Battle of the Books? Yeah, man, it was great. Now, you're probably thinking that four books in two months isn't that hard, especially since they're kids' books. But if someone didn't read any books on my own outside of school, it was a challenge. But I discovered a way to cheat the system. I discovered something called audiobooks. Burp -a -burp. Instead of having to sit still and read the book, I could just have someone read the book to me. And I would get through the book so much faster. I'd be able to read a book in about eight hours as opposed to reading a book never, because I would never be able to finish a book on my own. And I was actually able to understand what was going on. I legitimately thought that listening to audiobooks was cheating because of how well it worked. So I never told anyone my secret. Until just now. Please don't tell anyone. Also, I didn't just turn on an audiobook and start playing video games. No, I sat in my bed next to the CD player and followed along with the book, and sometimes I even took notes. I've wanted to talk about my love for audiobooks for so long, but I can't, because then people think I'm getting paid by a certain company, but I'm not, and I'll prove it. Instead of wasting your money on quality audiobooks made by professionals, you guys should all check out Librebox.org, where you can listen to free public domain audiobooks, which means there's only old-timey classical books on it, like Aesop's Fables, which in my opinion is all you need. Anyway, TJ and I did the battle of the books, and for one of the rounds, TJ was sick, so I had to answer the questions all by myself, and I never forgave him for that. And also the whole time I was keeping track of everyone's points, and me and TJ got the most questions right. My math skills are finally being useful. I was already craving the pizza. After the last round, the teacher said, "Okay, I'll tally up all the points and let you all know who the winner is in a couple of weeks." I was keeping track of everyone's score. I already knew we won. I turned to TJ and I said, TJ, guess what? We already- Oh, this is the round that you were sick on. I did not notice that until just now. But then, a couple of weeks go by, and I'm not hearing any news about a pizza party. I was expecting to walk into class one day, and there would just be a pile of pizza boxes waiting for me. But that never happened. The teacher in charge of the competition was a librarian. So one day, I went up to her and I asked, So, uh, did you ever say who won the Battle of the Books? Uh, also, my favorite pizza is barbecue chicken. And she said, Oh, these two fifth graders won. So the Battle of the Books was for both fifth and sixth graders. I burp -a -burr. It was a sixth grader, so I went to all the sixth grader battles. But apparently, there was some low-life fifth grader burp -a -burr. who got every single question right and stole my pizza party. And that taught me a valuable lesson. Even when you work hard, you don't always get what you want in life. But that's okay.
because one day, you'll be an adult and you can buy all the pizza you want without having to read first.